It's an increasingly magnetic vision that Jesus is giving us in this amazing teaching from the Sermon on the Mount. Magnetic, I say, because it's there and designed to draw people in. You remember the vision? That of a city on a hill shining out in a way that draws people in from all around and Jesus says will cause them to give praise to our Father in heaven. What an amazing thought to think that we could live a life, that we could be a church that has that effect on the society in which we find ourselves. It's a vision, remember Jesus said, that is underpinned by the attitude of the Beatitudes. Attitudes that express themselves in poverty of spirits, in, in meekness and patience and in a hunger and a thirst for righteousness. Not a self-righteous self-promotion, a facade, a hypocrisy if you like, that is all about reputation in the here and now, but rather a patient endurance and, and humble dependence that waits for the future kingdom of heaven as it's been promised to us. It's a beautiful vision and it's nothing less than a vision of the kingdom of heaven being lived out on earth. It's a vision of nothing less than the family of God getting on with its life day to day. And this idea of the family of God is both explicit and implicit throughout the teaching of the sermon. We have a father in heaven. Jesus keeps on saying that. Remember your father in heaven. And in the teaching that we're going to look at today in a few minutes time, you can see that it's, well, it's certainly explicit. You look down at chapter 5 verse 44, Jesus says, I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. This is the life of the family of God lived out on earth. And it's implicit from the fact that so much of this teaching was perfectly lived out by Jesus Christ, the true son of God. You think of the events of his crucifixion and the way as he was slapped and abused, he didn't retaliate, he didn't turn back, he didn't claim his rights or express his power in those moments. Instead, he endured patiently lived the life that was in keeping with the character of his father in heaven. Now, everything that we saw last week that we're going to see this week, this is the life of the family of God lived out, not to earn a place in his kingdom, but lived out because we have a secure place in his kingdom already. These are the values that are our family values because we have a father who is in heaven. And if you think about it for a little while, you will realise that these are values that can only have come from God in heaven. So many in our society today live according to, or at least believe in the worldview that is survival of the fittest, the evolutionary worldview that we have come from. That's who we are and it's where we're going. But survival of the fittest doesn't bring about the values that we're going to see today. Survival of the fittest doesn't work out in looking after the weak and the needy who are asking for your help. No, survival of the fittest leaves those people behind. Survival of the fittest doesn't see you turning your cheek when someone slaps you. No, survival of the fittest says you've got to retaliate in order to work your way up the pecking order, in order to be one of the fittest who survives. Survival of the fittest certainly doesn't involve us doing good to our enemies. Survivor of the fittest would say you do the opposite. Now we love these values as a society. So much of Western culture today is built on these values, but they don't come from nowhere. They come from God, our Father who is in heaven. And as you work this teaching through, you're gonna see so many different ways and I hope be able to think of so many different areas of your life, in, in your office, in your community, maybe in your family, or on social media or wherever you find yourself, so many places that these principles can work out. So get ready to dive in again. Remember, we're in the second week of two weeks working through these little blocks of teaching, all beginning with the same turn of phrase. This is the structure that breaks it down for this part of the sermon. Jesus says, you have heard it said, but I tell you this. You have heard it said, but I tell you this. And the you have heard it said is often a quotation from the law of God, though sometimes a distortion 
but every time Jesus is gunning at the hypocritical understanding of it. So in chapter 5 verse 38 he says, you have heard it that you have heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Now there he's quoting directly from Exodus in a uh, quoting a judicial principle that was given to the judges of the land as they handed out sentences for crimes that had been committed. It was the maximum sentence if you like you give an eye for an eye. But from what Jesus goes on to say it seems like the scribes and the Pharisees have taken this principle and are applying it to uh, everyday examples of of life. Jesus is saying, no, 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 this is not a principle you apply in these areas. Instead, you live according to the principles of the kingdom of heaven. And then you can see from verse 43, the second of these blocks for our week, he says, you've heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Now, that's not a quotation from the Old Testament at all. Nowhere does it say anything like that. No, the, the Old Testament says you love your neighbour as yourself, whoever your neighbour might be, and, and has teaching that says if you find your enemy's ox walking away, you take your enemy's ox back to them. No, the evidence is there in the law that you should love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So Jesus teaches in a way that is very much in keeping with that. Now he says don't minimise or misapply or worse even distorts the perfect law of God in order to suit your own hypocritical purposes. Instead he says ask what would your heavenly father do? What are the values of the family? Or ask the question what would Jesus have done, the true son of God, as he lived out the values of the kingdom of God? So get ready to dive in. Remember, pick someone in your group to be the leader as you go through the questions. Set yourself a rough time limit and then don't be afraid to work through these teachings in their full depth, remembering the vision of the city on the hill.